Lori. That was fantastic. I promise you a happy hour slot next time. Um, all right, so now, following up on that, and what I, I really love this aha moments are the, are the four leaf clover, right? There, there were a lot of nuggets of great insight in there, but I think uh, really trying to get at, at the uh, true connection uh, between innovation at the intersection of data and creativity uh, is, is important, and uh, there's no better uh, pair to draw this conversation even further this morning than Wenda Harris-Millard and Andrew Robertson. Uh, so please join me on the stage. Um, Wenda is the president and COO of MediaLink and an ARF board member. Lori Hiltz is also an ARF board member. I, I neglected to mention that earlier. Um, and Wenda's making a real difference in the industry by proving, providing critical counsel and direction to the media, advertising, and entertainment in industries. Um, before joining MediaLink, she was co-CEO and president at Media for Martha Stewart Living Omni Media. And she's won numerous industry awards, most recently in 2012, as one of the 100 most influential women in advertising in the last 100 years. That's a long time, right? I've been around. <laughs> um, and joining I Wenda know. is Andrew Robertson, president and CEO of BBDO Worldwide. So we're just thrilled to have another uh, media maven. Um, Andrew first came to BBDO in the UK in 1995, <coughs> joining Abbott Mead Vickers BBDO, where he subsequently served as chief executive. He began his advertising career at Ogilvy & Mather Lot, London as a media planner. How appropriate we have the Ogilvy Awards tonight. We actually have David Ogilvy on film that we're going to be sharing at those awards. Um, winning business and earning recognition throughout the year as BBDO has been recognized as Adweek's Global Agency of the Year for 2014. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this off with something that Michael Kathan, who's Wendell's business partner, uh, said when I was uh, being interviewed for iHeartRadio. Um, he said that we're here to connect pocket protectors and the pocket square. So um, take it away. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. Uh, Andrew and I are going to redefine uh, lightning round because we have a very, very hard stop uh, at 1010. So, Andrew. Uh, we'll see so what, what uh, we're, we're going to do the uh, the fireside Snapchat. Excellent, excellent. Well, we hope our, our remarks don't disappear forever. And one other thing, uh, I just need to co correct something. Laurie said, I think she said that the, the McDonald's vouchers arrived a little bit late. If FedEx delivered them, that is absolutely categorically impossible. <laughs> That's right. Long, long time client for BBDO. So, Andrew, yeah. all day long, all night long, data and tech, tech and data. Um, what does this really mean for creative agencies? And in particular, what does it mean for, for BBDO? Um, it, it, it means huge opportunity. Uh, it means that we should all be a lot more excited about what it lies ahead, us, ahead of us than what is behind us. And, and here's why. There are... There are really four big buckets of leverage in communications, and each of them is going to be uh, stretched. There's going to be more leverage in each of those buckets because of the data that we're going to be able to access, interpret, and use as a result of changes in media and technology. Um, the first of those buckets is targeting. Uh, historically, you can debate, but there's been and it, and it varies by brand. It's different if you're a Snickers bar or a Mercedes S-Class. Uh, but because we're going to be able to target uh, not just more precisely, uh, but more meaningfully, um, we're going to be able to use more meaningful discriminators to define these audiences. The leverage from targeting whether you're Snickers or Mercedes is going to increase and increase dramatically. Second big bucket of leverage is context. Getting to those people at the right time, in the right place, when they're in the right frame of mind. And historically, we've said there's kind of 4x to 10x. That's probably going to go from 10x to, to 30x. And I would say, finally, because I, you know, I feel in many ways these last 20 years in digital, I've been sitting in a math, science, and technology class without due um, understanding of the power of the creative and the context. Um, right. And I think that will facilitate the, the understanding. Yeah, I mean, it, um, just being able to serve advertising to people in the right context is going to, if we do it right, is going to increase 
the, um, the return. The third area is getting your messaging right. And obviously what we've got now is the potential to, to analyze much more data uh, to define messaging strategies and messaging sequence strategies to enhance the, uh, the returns that we're gonna get. And then the fourth area where uh, the leverage is going to increase even more, and it's already about 40 eggs, is creativity. Um, because the one thing we can be sure of is that uh, however much we're exposed to commercial messaging now, it's gonna go up. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's 2,000 messages a day now or 5,000 messages a day. It's a lot and it's gonna go up. And people, uh, you know, you've gotta deliver thumb-stopping creativity to, to just hold them for a few seconds to, uh, to create the experience. All of that, in my view, is going to be, um, a lot of what we're doing is gonna be video mm -hmm. uh, because that's what people like consuming. Uh, we're going to operate the way people live, um, which is not in 13 four week periods. <laughs> right. um, we're going to experiment a lot more and test a lot less. Um, we're well, going what's the difference uh, for you between experimenting and testing? So, so testing what you're trying to do is uh, artificially get people to respond in an artificial environment to a stimulus that you then extrapolate Will, will result in something happening. Experimenting is you actually put it out there, you see what happens, you either adjust, kill, or double down on, on the work that you're putting out there. And I, and I think that we're gonna be able to test, uh, we're gonna be able to experiment much, much more efficiently than we'll be able to test. Uh, so we'll do much more, of, much more of it. And we'll be testing, oh sorry, we'll be experimenting and measuring and optimizing against real r real returns on that investment as measured by the stuff that matters, like what's selling as a result of that, or very near proxies to that, in a way in which we've never been able to do it. Um, uh, and proving, uh, or otherwise, whether the work is working, not just in um, effectiveness awards every two years, but but every hour. In, in real time. Every hour. Yeah. Well, you, you've, um, you've done some great work that, that does leverage data, uh, insights, research, and I think we brought one with us today. Um, and it is a Snapchat oh, video okay. case yeah. study. So yeah. if, we, if we could roll that one, I think we have that up there. 50,000 young Kiwis admit to driving stoned. They don't want to hear marijuana slows reactions and makes driving dangerous. And when they hear it from the government, they tune out immediately. The New Zealand Transport Agency needed a way to get them interested and invested, so they would actually consider the message. Tinny Vision, a group of guys Snapchatting their stoner sessions. Add them, and they'll send you snaps. Watch them, then they're gone. No incriminating evidence. We got the trusted editors of the site Stoners Hang Out on to endorse following Tinny Vision. Throughout the day, followers were entertained by the guys getting stoned and their reactions getting slow. Now for the weather. It's a bit foggy. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is Tinny TV. No, no, Tinny Television. Tinny Television? T no, no, Tinny TV. Tinny TV? No, no, no. Again? What? Again? Tinny TV. Again. Is it a horse or a dolphin? Horse or a dolphin? Horse or a dolphin? Or wood? I don't even know if a pistachio is a nut. Right, that's a nut. Bee, 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 bee. <laughs> no more chips. Bro, bro, what's going on in his head? <laughs> <laughs> just the wind, eh? The, the, just the wind. Big burger, what about you, bro? Bro, four burgers, man. You good? <laughs> this fella, man, he had bacon, egg, cheese. Yo, please, yo, please, yo, please, yo, please, yo, please. Wow. Uh, insight to impact. So tell us about what the objectives were and, and 
Well, did you succeed? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the, the, that's about as precise and meaningful an audience as you can get. Um, stoners in New Zealand who drive, and and that's a really you know it, it, people get killed as a result of that. Um, but I think it's a great example of being able to really understand the audience that you're dealing with, being able to reach out to them through the sites that we knew they were spending time on, and then creating uh, a contextually relevant campaign for that group that, that is way more powerful than anything else we could have done. Um, you know, a one day uh, 11 view uh, Snapchat campaign, um, uh, which was, you know, which was ex extraordinarily effective. I mean, uh, the, the, the views of those were really high, and the, co and the comments that right. we got yeah. from people saying, you know, I, it's made me think again about, about driving when I'm stoned and all that stuff. And I, I, I wanted it as an example of just how precise this can now B. be, uh, A, but B, just how hard you have to work creatively to make it work, because just, just being able to get to these people very precisely, being able to get to them at the right time when they're in the right frame of, I was going to say mind, but when they're in the right frame of <laughs> out of mind. <laughs> out of mind. Um, that doesn't guarantee you anything. Mm -hmm. You have to create stuff that they're going to want to, want to, want to view on Snapchat and, and enlist uh, their friends. Um, so it, I, I think it's a, a very small but very precise That's example of what's example. possible. Yeah. Has this changed the way that you work with media agencies? Yeah, it's changing the way we're working mm -hmm. with media. I mean, uh, you know, the, the media agencies and, and creative agencies like mine have to work much more closely now than they ever have before. Um, it's really, really important to have a clear understanding of, of how and when we're going to get to people um, in, order to create the, uh, in order to create the work that's going to give them the experience that changes their behavior. And they, you know, there's, there are, by definition, um, so many more options now, um, but having upfront clarity mm -hmm. on the things that we should do rather than all the things that we could do uh, has never been more important. So one of our favorite buzzwords in the industry, collaboration, uh, yep. more, more key. Do you, do you think that the um, availability and then the emphasis on uh, data has, has it really changed the creative process or has it just sort of reinforced it? Um, it, it hasn't changed, well, there's a bit of it that hasn't changed, which is what, what I'll call the magic. Um, uh, you know, the ability to, to create something that engages people, that holds their attention, that gives them an experience that changes what they do. Um, that's, a, that's a magic alchemy that, uh, that hasn't changed since Dickens was writing his books. Um, but what it has changed is the uh, need to really plan much more thoughtfully and intentionally early on what all the various combinations and, com and permutations might be so that you can create work written against a single plot for all of those, for all of those possibilities. Um, so it's, it's, it means there is more to do now. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, I guess the process has changed. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that um, you know whether it's working or not instantly. And that's, uh, that's a big positive. That's a big one. Mm, yeah. Big positive. But pr prior to these tools, where did the insights come from? Um, <clears throat> you know, the thing about an insight is it's always obvious once you've had it. <laughs> um, uh, and they seldom need validation, frankly, for precisely that reason. Mm -hmm. Great, great insights uh, everybody already, uh, always agrees with. Um, a lot of them came from ob behaving, uh, sorry, observing behavior. And what, what is possible now is you're able to observe behavior through data rather than just through watching what people are doing. Mm -hmm. You're able to do it um, uh, in more depth and at, and at greater scale. Um, so that's a, that's a big plus. But a, lot of it is, um, a lot of it is frankly intuitive, and a lot of what you have to do with data 
is have, you have hypotheses, you have questions, and then you go to the data to find out if there's any validity to them. Then if you find out there's validity, we're in a good place. That's really you, you've got to invent these scenarios. Well, there's a, one, I think we're about to run out of time, but just one yeah. last um, quick question. Have you ever uncovered, <clears throat> excuse me, unexpected insights that, that changed your whole strategy on a campaign? Um, yeah, you do. I mean, you sometimes find that, uh, I mean, I remember sitting in a room once where somebody said, of course, none of us should be put off by the fact that 95% of consumption is off strategy. Um, you, you couldn't think, get away with that today. You think something <laughs> is being consumed in a particular way and find right. out it's being consumed in a very different way. Um, you know, that's, that's why I say that the, the, the beauty of the data is if you ask the question, if you have the hypothesis, we can now check with far greater degrees of certainty whether it's true or not. Um, well, Andrew, I know you have a hard stop. You've I got do, a, a big event coming up, and I do think it's 1010, and I know Gail and everyone thanks you very, very much for being here this morning. Thank you very much. All right, Madeira, I'll see you soon.